How good is a home test kit for soil? And how does it compare to a lab test? In this video, I'm going to compare three different ways to test the MPK value of your soil. I'll compare the manual RAPI test, the digital RAPI test, and a professional lab test. I'll look at both the products and the results. The Lusterleaf Manual RAPI Test Kit is easy to use and inexpensive at about 50 cents per soil sample. To get your result, you have to visually compare the color of the sample to a standard color patch. The problem with this is that colors on the color patch are very similar and it can be difficult to distinguish one concentration from another. The Lusterleaf Digital Meter is a bit more expensive. The initial kit costs $50 versus $20 for the manual kit, and you only get enough chemicals for five tests. But you can buy additional refill chemicals at about a dollar per soil sample. This product uses the exact same tests and chemicals as the manual kit. The difference is that an electronic meter is used to make the measurements instead of your eyes. I wonder if that makes the results more accurate. I've tested my soil with both kits and I've made a separate video on each one. They provide more information, show you how to get your soil sample, and on how to do the test. I also sent my soil sample to a local professional soil lab to get their results. Here's a comparison of all three results. The first thing you will notice is that the nitrogen values are missing from the lab test. That is because labs usually don't measure nitrogen. That may seem strange to you, but there is a good reason. The nitrogen level in soil changes very rapidly. By the time you get your sample to the lab and it gets tested, the levels in the soil have already changed. Measuring nitrogen is an advantage of the home test kits, but they have a limitation as well. The test only measures nitrate and not ammonium, nitrite, or even organic nitrogen. Plants can use both nitrate and ammonium and it is important to measure both. The other thing you will notice is that the lab results give you actual parts per million values. The home kits only give you a range, like low or high. This is okay if you just want a rough idea of the nutrients, but it's not accurate enough to determine the amount of fertilizer you should add. For example, let's say you get a low reading. Is it really low and you need to add fertilizer? Or is it almost medium and you don't need to add fertilizer? Both home test kits use the same chemicals, and yet they got very different results for phosphate and potassium. The manual comparison got medium and low, while the digital meter shows them both as high. I am quite confident that the lab results are correct. They use much better equipment and are regulated for accuracy. They use an ICP instrument for potassium, which is very accurate. Their results also mirror the ones I got in 2016. Neither of the home tests got the same value as the lab for both phosphate and potassium. When I used the digital meter, I inserted the sample vial and took a reading. Then without moving the meter or vial, I took several other readings. I would have expected these to all show the same result. I did get the same reading for nitrogen, probably because there was very little color to measure. But for both phosphorus and potassium, I got inconsistent readings. When labs measure potassium and phosphorus, they use an extraction method to get the nutrients out of the soil. The results depend very much on the extraction method used. My lab uses the Olson bicarb method. Labs in different regions of the country use different extraction methods depending on the type of local soil. The home test kits don't provide any information about the method used, so it's difficult to compare their results with ones from a lab. You also don't know if the test kit is suitable for your type of soil. What does all this mean? The RAPI test soil kits are considered to be some of the best home kits on the market. If you are going to buy a kit, I would suggest getting the manual RAPI test kit. I am not convinced that the digital meter gives you better results. Garden home test kits are not an accurate way to measure soil nutrients. They are useful if you get a low reading or a very high reading. If low, you know that you're missing a nutrient and you can add it. If high, you know that you shouldn't add any more of that nutrient or the soil might become toxic. Middle of the ground readings are not very useful. Without getting actual nutrient PPM values, you really can't figure out how much fertilizer to use. And if you're just going to gas, then why bother doing a soil test in the first place? 
Lab tests also have a problem. Nitrogen is the most likely nutrient that is missing from your soil, and they don't measure it. So even if you get a lab test done, you don't know how much nitrogen to add to your soil. So what should you do? Here's what I do. I grow stuff. If it grows, I don't add fertilizer. I do mulch, and in my vegetable garden, I do add some manure or compost each year. Containers are a different story. They need fertilizer because they are being watered a lot. This approach is simple, and you don't need to buy either a kit or order a lab test. I like to keep gardening simple. I've made several other soil testing videos, and you can see the full list by clicking on the playlist in the top right hand corner. Many of these tests require no equipment. If you are interested in learning more about increasing the health of your soil, click on the link to my new book, Soil Science for Gardeners.